Now suppose we have a parametric curve. So we have x and y as a function of t, with t between some starting time and some ending time. That draws a curve. So in the xy plane, that's going to draw a curve for us. Suppose we want to take that curve and revolve it around one of the axes. For example, suppose we revolve it around the x-axis. Then we're going to get something that might be shaped like a vase. It's called a surface of revolution when you do that. So you have this vase here. And what we want to do is to figure out what is the area of that surface of revolution. Well, we're going to do the integral in the parameter. So we have this parameter. It goes from a to b. If you slice up t, the parameter, into tiny little changes, right? Each little change in t corresponds to a little bit of change along the curve. And that little bit of change along the curve, when it gets revolved, becomes a little ribbon of surface area. So basically, by, by partitioning t, we're actually breaking up this vase into little ribbons. And we're going to see if we can calculate the area of one little ribbon. Now that little ribbon, if we were to take one of those ribbons, it looks something like this, right? It's a little loop of ribbon. And its length is delta L. And we already know that delta L from uh, differential considerations would be dx dt squared plus dy dt squared times delta t. So we know that's the length of one of these ribbons. If we snip that ribbon with a pair of scissors, we're going to get basically a ribbon we can flatten out, and the height of that ribbon is delta L. Now that ribbon was big enough to go around that whole vase, right? So it was basically big enough to be a circle with radius y. So the length of a circle of radius y is 2 pi times the radius, so 2 pi y. So that means that a little bit of surface area, I'll call it delta s, is going to be delta L times 2 pi y. And if we put that together, delta s is going to be 2 pi y. y, remember, is a function of the parameter t from our parameterization up here. 2 pi y of t times the square root times delta L, which is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared times delta t. Now what we want to do is to add up all those little bits of surface. So we've broken it up into n tiny chunks, then we're going to add up all n of those little areas of ribbons to get the total surface area. So if we add up all the little bits of surface area, we'll get the total surface area. That will only be approximate, but we can make the approximation better and better by taking the limit as the norm of the partition tends to zero. So if we go and take the limit as the norm of the partition tends to zero, in other words, if we partition this up finer and finer, we're going to get more and more accurate answer. And that's the limit of a Riemann sum, so it's got to be an integral, integral from a to b of 2 pi y of t times the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And this finite delta t becomes an infinitesimally small dt in that integral. So there's the total surface area. This is if you revolve about the x-axis. Remember, the 2 pi y came in as the circumference of a circle of radius y. If you revolve your curve around the y-axis, and you'll get a vase that stands up like this, you'll still slice it up in t, you'll still get these ribbons, but now the radius of a single ribbon is going to be x. So the distance around that ribbon is going to be 2 pi x. So you get this formula, the integral from a to b of 2 pi x of t times the square root of, still have the same length element, So here are two formulas. This one, the first one for revolving about the x-axis, the second one for revolving about the y-axis. So here's an example where we can find the area of a surface generated by revolving a particular curve about the y-axis. 
So remember our formula for the surface area, if we revolve about the y-axis, is going to be the integral from starting time to ending time. So 0 to square root of 3, square root of th 3 um, 2 pi. If you're going around the y-axis, your radius is actually x. So we get times x, which is 2 thirds t to the 3 halves, times our length element dt. Now, in this case, dx dt is, let's see, if we take the derivative of this, 3s comes down and hits the 2 thirds, that becomes 1. So we get t to the 1 half. Um, y, y is already 2 times t to the 1 half. So if we take the derivative, dy dt, and the 1 half comes down and makes 1, and then we get t to the negative 1 half. So x squared would be the square root of t to the one the square of t the square of the square root of t, which would be t, and y squared would be one over t. So all we have to do is to um, do this integral. Let's see, two pi times two thirds is well. Okay, so we'll have two pi times two thirds t to the 3 halves. What I want to do is, I, I hate having that 1 over t underneath this root, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 1 over t from both terms. If I do that, if you factor 1 over t out of this term, you get t squared. If you factor 1 over t out of this term, you get plus 1. My plan here is to pull that out. Um, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 thirds pi t to the one t to the three halves and then the root of the product is the product of the root so this is one over t to the one half square root of one over t is one over the square root of t and then times the square root of t squared plus one so with a little simplifying I've got the integral down to the integral from zero to root three of four thirds pi t to the 3 halves divided by t to the 1 half, that's coming from the square root of 1 over t. Um, 3 halves minus 1 half is 1, so we just have t times the square root of t squared plus 1 and dt. Ah, this can be solved by a substitution. So if we make the substitution u equal t squared plus 1, then du equals 2t dt. Um, we actually have a whole 4t dt if you like, um, but we'll just we'll just uh, yeah. So 2 du is the same as 4t dt. Let's replace everything in our integral now. So we'll have the surface area is equal to the integral. See, according to our choice here, originally t was going to start at zero, which means u would start at one by plugging zero in for t. And t is going to end at root 3. Root 3 squared is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So u is going to end at 4. Now I have a, I have a 2. I have a 2 and a t dt. That's the same. Or 4t dt. 4t dt is the same thing as 2 du. So I can replace this with 2 thirds pi. And um, times the square root of u du. Hmm. This is u to the one half, so its antiderivative is u to the th u to the um, three halves. So we have the integral from oh we have an antiderivative now. So we have pi u to the three halves. I've already got one two thirds. I need another two thirds to take care of that three halves when it comes down. So we're going to have to have four ninths. Okay, evaluated between our two bounds. Almost there. Okay, check and make sure this derivative is right. The 3 halves comes down, and we get 2 thirds pi u to the 1 half, which is what we had after the substitution. Good, so now we'll just plug in 4. This if 4 to the 3 halves means take the square root of 4 and then cube it. The square root of 4 is 2, cubed is 8. So we have 4 times pi times 8 divided by 9. 4 times 8 is 32, so we have 32 pi over 9, minus, if you plug in 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 cubed is 1, so we have minus 4 pi over 9. 32 minus 4 is 28 pi over 9, and that gives us the surface area.